Good morning. Before we begin worship this morning, a note about Mother's Day. Today is the day our culture commemorates as Mother's Day. And so I say a special thanks to all of those who have mothered us in one way or another. You have sustained us, nurtured us, loved us, and comforted us. And for that, I give great thanks. I also know that today is a day that can be a challenging one for some. Those who long to be mothers but have not been able to be so. Those whose mothers were not a source of comfort to them. Those who have known the loss or estrangement of a child. Those who are grieving the loss of their mother and others. And so we strive to be sensitive to those who are celebrating and those who are not. And those who are somewhere in the middle. As Paul reminds us, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. So wherever you find yourself today, you are welcome just the way you are. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Champaign, Illinois. I'm so glad we've gathered together for this service of worship of our God. Last weekend was Cuba weekend. What a wonderful, fun time that was of celebrating our partnership with our siblings in Christ in Cuba. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch that worship service and worship online, uh, please do, do so. Scroll back in your feed here on Facebook or YouTube, and you'll find that service from last week. We also had a great uh, weekend with the Forum and Two Step. I uh, got to learn some dances online in the privacy of our own homes. So all of that will be available in video form later to share if you missed out on that last weekend. But we're grateful for that. Today we uh, move on in our celebration of the season of Easter. It is still Easter. So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Indeed. It is uh, still the season of Easter a bit longer. And so we, we have our beautiful banners here behind me and grateful to Mindy for those and uh, grateful for this time of gathering and worship. A little uh, update on the schedule. There will be no uh, Sundays in the park today. Uh, that normally would be today, but uh, uh, with Mother's Day, we will not be having the Sundays in the park today. So we won't be gathering in, uh, in Westside Park. We'll resume that on the fourth Sunday. Also, a reminder to third and fourth grade students in the Bible class that begins today uh, in person here on the patio. So a reminder about that. It's time to, to move on over toward the, the patio so that you can join in that time of uh, Bible study. We're grateful for our leaders and volunteers taking, play, taking part in that great study of the Bible. Glad that you're here and glad that we're able to gather for worship. So let us uh, began our worship this morning with a minute for mission. This is from the uh, PEB, the Presbyterian Education Board Ministry in Pakistan. This is a pre-recorded uh, minute for mission. So learn a bit here about that ministry. Thank you and happy Mother's Day to the entire congregation of First Presbyterian Church. Through budgeted scholarships this past year, you have cared for and nurtured 12 girls and one boy from the Christian Girls Higher Secondary School in Sangla Hill one of the PEB schools in Pakistan. All their pictures and all their thank yous are hanging on the mission kiosk in Westminster Fellowship Hall for you to view. Allow me to read one thank you. Dear friends of CGHS Sangla Hill, I am writing this to say thanks for your support in the pandemic period of COVID-19. It was too difficult for my parents to bear domestic expenses they were unable to afford my educational expenditure. It is just possible because of you to continue my study. My words are not enough to pay my gratitude to you. Thanks once again. Sidra Falakshin, Class 7. And also thank you from Subaina Shahid, Class 4. 
Urfa Rashid, Class 9. Amber Nazir, Class 3. Anmol Irfan, Class 3. Meryl Basharat, Class 3. Mushkan Adnan, Class 3. Sarah Asher, Class 5. Mary Rose, Class 3. Shamaya Nazir, Class 3. Hannah Tazleen, Class 9. Anushka Javid, Class 5. Hanan Masi, Class 2. Happy Mother's Day. Please join me in our call to worship. We come to this place where God pours out love on us. We join our voices in praise as our, lead, as our fears are left behind. We gather with these people, those who seek to follow Jesus. So we might walk the paths of service hand in hand. We open our hearts to the gifts of the Spirit. So that grace and peace might be the fruit we bear. Our first hymn today is, O oh, for a world where everyone respects each other's ways, where love is lived and all is done with justice and with praise. Please join in singing. and with praise. Oh, for a world where goods are shared and misery relieved, where truth is spoken, children spared, equality achieved. We welcome one world family and struggle with each choice that opens us to unity and gives our vision a voice. are strong, the foolish ones are wise. Tell all who mourn, outcasts belong, who perishes will rise. Oh, for a world preparing for God's glorious reign of peace, where time and tears will be no more, and all but love will cease. We have been called to follow Christ by obeying his commandment that we love one another as he has loved us. Let us confess how we have fallen short of that love. Let us pray. Gracious and faithful God, hear us now. We seek to follow you. We strive to serve you. We want to be filled with your Holy Spirit. In spite of our longing, we stumble and struggle. We do things we should not do, and we fail to do the things we should. We harm ourselves and others and your good creation. Most of all, in our failings, we hurt you. Forgive us, God. Grant us strength and courage to be the people you would have us be. Fill us with your spirit and abide in us. Let our lives bear witness to your steadfast love and faithfulness, so that others may know you live in and through us. Amen. Friends, God abides in you. God is breathing, living, forgiving, restoring you in this moment and the days to come. This is the good news for us. As God is in us, so we can live, work, care for others, so that love, hope, and joy might touch all people. 
Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for Mindy and Jip and Samantha to come forward and share time with young and young at heart. Hello. Hi, Samantha. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. What you got there? Well, I brought some fruit with me. So I have an apple. <gasps> I like apples. <laughs> And I have an orange. Mm, yummy. Yeah. Do you have a favorite fruit? I know you said you like apples. Yeah, I like apple sauce a lot. Mm. With cinnamon. Apple do you like cinnamon? I, yes, I do like cinnamon, That's especially really in yummy. applesauce. Me too. But I think my favorite fruit is probably raspberries. <gasps> raspberries. Mm. The red ones? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm, yummy. I like those too. <laughs> yeah. So I brought fruit today because today's scripture compares people to plants and God likes to grow plants that bear lots and lots of fruit. So I wonder what kind of fruit God wants from people. God wants fruit from people? Mm Mm-hmm. But but I can't grow fruit. (laughs) Well, maybe you can't grow an apple or an orange, but you can definitely bear fruit. I think Mindy kind of has an idea of what we're talking about. Miss Mini, what kind of fruit is he talking about? (laughs) Well, Paul gives us a clue in his letter to the Galatians. He talks about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. How can a spirit have fruit? (laughs) Well, it's not fruit in the way that you think of actual things you eat, like the apple or the orange. It's more like things that you can grow. So it's things that you want to grow inside of you, things that please God. So Paul gives a list. Would you like to know what the list is? Yeah, because I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so in Galatians, Paul says that the fruit of the Spirit is love. Oh, I know that one. That one's easy. God always likes love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And joy and peace and patience. Oh, I have a hard time with that one. (laughs) Yes, a lot of us do. (laughs) Kindness. Generosity. What, what's generosity? Uh, that's when you give. When you give something to someone else in need. Oh, okay. And faithfulness. And gentleness. And self-control. Well, the last one's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Especially if you've got warm cookies sitting on the counter you're not supposed to eat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> self-control can be hard. But we work at it. And God likes to see those things grow in us, like fruit grows on a tree. Does that help a little bit with understanding what God wants from us, from fruit? Yeah, that's, that makes more sense now. Because <laughs> I can't grow apples. I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah. But you can definitely bear all those other fruits, like peace and patience and love and joy. I'll try. Yeah, me too. We can try together, Jip. And God will help us. Mm-hmm. Shall we pray about that? Yeah, let's pray about that. Can right. you pray, Samantha? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your love and for helping us to grow. Inspire us to bear all kinds of fruit and to share your love with others. Amen. Amen. All right, well, I'll see you later, Jip. Can I have some of the apple? Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> While Jeff has some of his apple, we share our gifts with uh, each other. One of the ways we do that is through this offering. We share with each other and with God. One of the ways that uh, I define ministry is serving God by serving others. And we do that through this offering in many other ways. So let us come bearing our gifts to our God who has blessed us gratefully. Let's pray. God, thank you for the gifts you've given us. Thank you for the gifts of our lives. We ask that you would bless what we return to you today and use it for the good of your kingdom. We pray this in the name of the Christ. Amen. Thank you. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever charm like no cares could destroy.
Yes, Lord, at the break of day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plane and the lathe, be there at our labors and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord. Your hands swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our homing and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment whose presence is balm be there at our sleeping and give us we pray your peace in our hearts Lord at the end of the day Our scripture reading this morning is from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 17. Let's go to God in prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O God, in the reading of your word, that we would hear what you have to say to us today. May your Holy Spirit be poured out upon us through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please, we'll have our scripture in French. Bonjour, mes frères et sœurs. Aujourd'hui, nous dans le livre de Jean. Chapitre 15, premier au 17e verset. C'est moi qui suis le verset, et mon Père est le vigneron. Tout serment qui est en moi et qui ne porte pas de fruits, je l'enlève, et tout serment qui porte des fruits, il le taille afin qu'il porte encore plus de fruits. Déjà vous êtes purs à cause de la parole que je vous ai annoncée. Demeurez en moi et je demeurerai en vous. Le serment ne peut pas porter de fruits par lui-même sans rester attaché au cep. Il en va de même pour vous si vous ne demeurez pas en moi. Je suis le cep, vous êtes le serment. Celui qui demeure en moi et, qui, et, et en qui je, de, je demeure porte beaucoup de fruits, car sans moi, vous ne pouvez rien faire. Si quelqu'un ne demeure pas en moi, il est jeté dehors comme le serment et il sèche. Puis on ramasse les serments, on les jette au feu et ils brûlent. Si vous demeurez en moi et que mes paroles demeurent en vous, vous demanderez ce que vous voudrez et, et cela vous serez accordé. Ce qui manifeste la gloire de mon Père, c'est que vous portiez beaucoup de fruits, vous serez alors vraiment mes disciples. Tout comme le Père m'a aimé, moi aussi, je vous ai aimé. Demeurez dans mon amour. Si vous gardez mes commandements, vous demeurerez dans mon amour, de même que j'ai gardé le commandement de mon Père et que je demeure dans son amour. Je vous ai dit, je vous ai dit cela afin que ma joie demeure en vous et que votre joie soit complète. Voici mon commandement. Aimez-vous les uns les autres comme je vous ai aimé. Il n'a pas plus grand amour que de donner votre vie pour vos amis. Vous êtes mes amis si vous faites ce que je vous, je vous commande. Je ne vous appelle plus serviteur parce que le serviteur ne sait pas ce que fait son Seigneur. Mais je vous ai appelé ami parce que je vous ai fait connaître tout ce que j'ai appris de mon Père. Ce n'est pas vous qui m'avez choisi, mais c'est moi qui vous ai choisi. Et je vous ai établi en fait que vous alliez, que vous portiez des fruits et que votre fruit demeure. Alors, ce que vous demanderez au Père, à mon nom, il vous le donnera. Ce que je vous commande, c'est de vous aimer les uns les autres. Amen. Our scripture is from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 17. 
I invite you to listen for God's word for you. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The last house that we lived in in Tennessee had some fairly large trees in the backyard, and over the years we had some storms come through which did some damage to those trees. During one storm, a big limb, maybe a foot in diameter, snapped off and fell to the ground. It was then that a funny thing happened. That limb died. The leaves on it withered and began to fall off. The limb stayed right there in the backyard for a while because I didn't own a chainsaw at the time and had to wait for someone to come and help me out with it. And while waiting for someone to do something about it, that limb continued to wither. Before long, there were no leaves at all hanging to the limb, and the limb itself started to deteriorate. Strange how that happened, huh? Just because that limb was no longer attached to the tree from which it came, it stopped producing new leaves. The leaves that were there dried up and fell off, and the limb itself started to rot, all because it was not attached to the tree anymore. I guess that's not surprising to you, and I admit I'm not that clueless. I was not really surprised when the fallen limb deteriorated. That's the thing, way that things work, after all. A limb no longer connected to the tree, to the roots which nourish it, will die. Jesus told us that we are all the same as that limb. He used a slightly different analogy, that of a vine and branches, but he was saying the same thing to us. Jesus was telling us that we are not of any use away from the vine. Just as that limb withered and died without being attached to the tree, so do we wither and die without being attached to Jesus. Jesus even said, apart from me, you can do nothing. We all have to stay connected to the vine in order to be of use. And that vine runs right through the church that Jesus founded. The church, with all its warts and blemishes, should be the centering point of our lives. In her memoir, Traveling Mercies, Anne Lamott writes about why she stays so close to her church. In one story, she tells about a seven-year-old girl who got lost. She writes, the little girl ran up and down the streets of the big town where they lived, but she couldn't find a single landmark. She was frightened. Finally, a policeman stopped to help her. He put her in the passenger seat of his car, and they drove around until she finally saw her church. She pointed it out to the policeman, and then she told him firmly, you can let me out now. This is my church, and I can always find my way home from here. Lamont writes, and that is why I've stayed so close to mine. Because no matter how bad I'm feeling, how lost or lonely or frightened, when I see the faces of the people at my church and hear their voices, I can always find my way home. 
in Christianity now, there's a large emphasis on a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm not knocking that. A person's individual walk with their Lord and Savior is vitally important. But it's not all. It's not all by far. When all we focus on is our personal relationship with Jesus, then we turn faith into an individual matter only. And that is counter to what the scriptures tell us. When we narrow our religion down to just us and Jesus, then we have a tendency to reform Jesus in our image. We end up with a version of Jesus that doesn't challenge us because we have this Jesus who just silently agrees with us. Paul described the church as a body. We're all part of the same body, and we cannot say that we do not need the other parts. We cannot take Jesus out of the church and truly understand what he is teaching us. We come to church online or in person to be nurtured and challenged by one another. We come to church to fellowship and worship. We come to church because the church is the bride of Jesus, and he called us to come to church. But we don't just come to church. We together are the church. We must stay connected to the vine, to all of the branches that are around us. Jesus told his disciples something else, though. He told them that in order to make them bear more fruit, God prunes them back. And that's what I struggle with. I'm not one who likes to prune trees or shrubs or other growing things. I usually like to just let nature take its course. I prefer to let trees just grow and grow in whatever way they happen to grow. Now, I've had people tell me that a little judicious pruning would help the trees, and maybe I wouldn't have lost so many limbs in that yard in Tennessee had I done so. But it's really pretty disheartening to me to see a tree or even a shrub that's been pruned back. I just don't like seeing something that had been growing so big suddenly cut back to much less than it was. I always like to think that I'm letting God take care of things by letting them grow naturally. But this passage tells us that God does think some pruning ought to be done. Those of you who are better horticulturists than I already know that. You know that pruning something back causes new shoots to come forth. There's much more growth in the proper direction for the plant's well-being if a plant has been pruned than in something left to grow on its own. Left untended, little sucker shoots grow, dispersing the life and vitality of the vine so that it produces little fruit. Jesus knew this and his audience knew it when he said to them, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. And the question is, what is it that needs pruning in our lives? There are always activities in our lives that are not really that useful to the kingdom of God. Perhaps it's excessive television watching or time surfing the internet. Perhaps it's time on social media or getting pulled into the latest gossip. Perhaps it's any variety of activities that are not used for God's glory. Every one of us has such activities, and perhaps some of them should be pruned. But I'm not sure that's what Jesus was talking about here. He said that God prunes branches that are already bearing fruit. He seems to be speaking of pruning back things that are productive. Sometimes we are guilty of living like the bumper sticker that said, Jesus is coming, look busy. Sometimes we're more concerned about keeping busy, toiling away for the kingdom than about spending time with God. In this passage, Jesus spoke about bearing fruit. One pastor says it this way, we need to learn the difference between productivity and fruitfulness. All too often we are ruled by our schedules. We are busy running from activity to activity, busy being productive without really considering if we are being fruitful. The important thing is to bear fruit for the kingdom of God, not to fill all of our days with busyness. Henry Nouwen, a priest and author, said, We have all been called to be fruitful, not successful, not productive, not accomplished. Fruitfulness is the realization that I am worth more than the sum total of all of my efforts. Mother Teresa of Calcutta once was asked, How do you measure the success of your work? She looked puzzled for a moment and then replied, I don't remember that our Lord ever spoke of success. He spoke only of faithfulness and love. This is the only success that counts. We are not called to be productive or successful, but to bear fruit. Sometimes the best thing we can do with our time is to sit alone in the silence and commune with God. 
Is that something we would call productive? No, it's what the world would call unproductive. That time could be better spent doing something for the church, right? Well, no. Jesus went away from the crowds to spend time alone with God, and so should we. It enables us to come back refreshed and with a better sense of what should be done for God's kingdom, of what we can do to bear the most fruit. Sometimes the best thing we can do is just to abide. Abide is a word that we really don't use much these days, but Jesus used it repeatedly in the passage we read today. In those 17 verses, Jesus said, abide 11 times. My favorite Bible paraphrase, the message translates verse 4 as, live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. I like that paraphrase. Live in Jesus. Make your home in Jesus, just as Jesus does in us. It means, it means to remain somewhere or to continue to be somewhere or something or to endure. We abide in Jesus by living our lives in and through him. We abide in Jesus by entering into his loving embrace for all time. We abide by simply being in Jesus. Abiding is not an action. It's a state of being. We don't abide by keeping busy. We abide by resting in Jesus. We abide by remaining connected to Jesus and the branches of the church so that we can bear fruit for God's kingdom. So today, I invite us to abide in Jesus. Let's not worry so much about doing the right thing or accomplishing everything on our to-do lists. Just be. Let us relax in the presence of Jesus, in the presence of our fellow believers. May we allow God to prune back those things that, while they may be good and productive, may not be required for the kingdom or may not be required for us to complete. May we let God prune back those things that stand in the way of new growth, of new fruit, so that we may abide in Jesus and bear fruit for God's kingdom together. Amen. Thank you.
Let's go to our God in prayer. Creator of all that lives, maker of all that breathes, source of all that grows, nothing can long exist apart from you. Lord Jesus, you are the vine and we are the branches created to be joined to you. Help us to live in you. Secure us in the faith of all the saints, apostles, and martyrs. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise. That amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Lord Jesus, you are the vine and we are the branches created to bear fruit. Help us to abide in you. Lord, hear our prayer for the world you have made and for those who dwell upon it. We ask your blessing upon the land and those who work it this day. We ask your blessing upon those who labor to nourish your people and those who work to feed the nations. Bless, O Lord, those who care for the air, the land, and the sea, and for all that is in them or upon them. Bless, too, those who bring your love to their neighbors, your compassion to the strangers in their midst. Bless, O God, those who seek to heal the wounds of the spirit and the afflictions of the body. Bless them and those to whom they minister. Bless, O God, all those whom we hold before you at this time. Fill them and us with your life-giving love in and through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear us, we pray, as we lay our burdens before you in the silence. We offer these prayers and the prayers of our lives in Jesus' name and for his sake as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn is a very familiar one, Jesus, the very thought of thee. Jesus, the very fills my breast, but sweeter far thy face to see, and in thy presence rest. No voice can sing, or heart can frame, nor can the mind recall sweeter sound than thy blessed name, O Savior of us all. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. 
abiding in Christ so that you may bear much fruit for the kingdom. And all God's people say together, Amen.